So in today's video, we're going to continue to work on Vision OS development videos with Unity, which I'm really excited to walk you through. And specifically, we're going to be covering two different features. We're gonna be looking at how to implement to the Windows by using the built-in Vision OS platform and how to implement VR experiences of what Apple refers to as fully immersive when building for VR. I'm also gonna walk you through how we can use the different pointers. So I'm gonna show you with 2D how we can use the touches that are built in into the input system. How does that transfer into Vision OS? And then we're also going to be looking at the new special pointer called Vision OS Special Pointer, specifically for VR. So I jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so we got a lot to cover today and I'm really excited to show you what I've been learning throughout this week, which I focus on Vision OS and looking at how the 2D windows work and also how VR full immersive works. And hopefully if you like this video, I'll keep making more. So just let me know below. So we're gonna start with uh, a new project. And then I'm using Unity 2022.3.22F1. Just make sure that you use that. I'm also going to be using the URP pipeline. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into build settings and then right off the bat, we're gonna be switching this to use Vision OS. So just go ahead and click on switch platform. Once you do this, we're gonna go and also update the active input handling. And that's because some of the stuff that I'm gonna cover today are gonna require that. So just gonna go into player and then make sure that you go to Vision OS. And then if you go down here, we're gonna see this input handling and it's gonna be the new one. It's not so new anymore. <laughs> but you get the idea. We're gonna be using that one for now. The next thing that we're gonna need though, is gonna need to install that new input package. So I'm just gonna go into package manager and then change this to be Unity registry. And then we're just gonna type in input. It's gonna bring in the input system and then install. Then the next thing that I'll do though, is I have a core package that I always use for everything that all the tutorials that I create. And that just has a logger that allows me to display information. So let's create a new folder here. And this one is gonna be called input. This is where we're gonna be putting our input actions file. And that's why we installed the package for the input, the new input system. So just right click in here and then create. And then we're gonna be creating a new input actions file. This one I'm gonna call vision OS and then input actions. And then once you create it, it's gonna give you this option to generate a C-sharp class. And I want to do that because we're gonna be referencing this in C-sharp code. So we need to, basically this runs behind the scenes and it creates a class and everything that you need to be able to interact with the input system. So there's multiple ways to do input in Unity. That's everything that we need to do there. So we can just go ahead and double click it. And there's gonna be multiple inputs that I want to show you, right? So right now we have Vision OS and we're using basically the default, which is going to be a 2D window that shows when we launch this application on the Apple Vision Pro. So if you use it as it is without any other steps, this window right here that it's rendering on the game view is going to be put into a window in the Apple Vision Pro, right? The window is gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to move it around, to resize it. It's going to have those capabilities, but if you want to capture input, basically when you do a pinch or when we do a pinch and we move it, I wanna capture the position of basically my pinch as I'm pinching. And I also want to capture the tab. So those are gonna be the two different actions that we're going to be mapping to. So let's create an action map. And this one I call the Vision Pro, and then I call it 2D. For now, I think these two are gonna be good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save asset. And then we'll go back into it once we start working on the full immersive to create the actions that are associated with the Vision Pro VR one. So I'm gonna do window and then this one is gonna be called input handler. We're gonna be creating a cursor prefab that is going to denote where on the 2D window our cursor is going to be. Basically, as we move it, as we do a pinch, it's going to show uh, a cursor similar to the mouse, you know, cursor that we get when we're trying to select on different things. 
And then I'm gonna have also a Boolean to determine if we're gonna be using a cursor or not. If you set it to false, we're basically just going to be, you know, showing the touch position change instead of actually also showing the cursor. And then I also have our mappings to the VisionOS input actions for the tab and also the one that we did for the position change. And this is normally how you instantiate it. This is how you enable it so that we can start to use it. And then also the main camera, I had it down there as a reference and then I ended up just adding it here on the awake method. And then we have a private variable to basically have that reference. And then if the cursor prefab basically was populated, we can set the property to true, the use cursor, and then we can also instantiate the cursor. And then this on touch tab is going to be executed whenever we do a touch tab, which is gonna be a pinch. And then we're just gonna be displaying this on the actual logger. And then when the touch position change, when I'm doing this gesture, it's basically going to get the actual value, which is a 2D vector. And then also it's going to print this to the UI. And then we're also, if we're using the cursor, which we're gonna be using, we're gonna be enabling the activation on the component, basically on the game object. And then we're also going to be changing the cursor position so that we can reflect where it sits on the 2D window. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new game object. And then in this case, this one is gonna be called the window input handler basically what we call the script. And then we can set everything here to zero. And then we can say window input handler. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it into the view here so you guys can see what it is. I'm gonna double click on it. And this is gonna be our cursor, right? It's what we're going to be rendering when we're doing a pinch gesture and then moving our hands around. And then if you go into it, it's basically just as an image with a sprite and then just uh, basic is probably default material. There's nothing special, it's just really small because of the resolution that we need this on. And then all we need to do is just drag and drop that cursor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new canvas. I'm gonna go here into my hierarchy and then add a canvas. And then I'm also going to just reference the script. So basically the max scale is gonna be what we use to scale the objects that we're creating. So I think I'm just gonna do something like 0.5. How do we fix that issue when we try to scale the window? All the UI elements are all skew. They don't keep everything, you know, all the sizes proportionally to the aspect ratio of the window. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go ahead and build it and deploy it. So I'm gonna go into the folder where I want to put this on and then hit choose. I didn't show you this before, so I wanted to show you this anyway, saying what's gonna happen is this is gonna be creating an Xcode project and that Xcode project we need to modify a little bit. The fix is going to have to be applied here because this is when the, basically the window is gonna finish launching and you don't wanna do it right here because it's gonna be anything other than Vision OS that's based on the compiler flag. I'm basically gonna add it right here. And what I add is going to be this scene geometry preferences vision. It's going to allow us to pass different preferences. In my case, I want to pass in this constraint, which is an enum. It's called the scene resizing restrictions uniform. Now we can focus on some of the Vision OS components, go into Vision OS and then player settings, and then XR plugin management, and then install the XR plugin management. 
because it's going to allow us to basically get the Vision OS plugin that we're going to need for the fully immersive experience. So once you do that, go into the Vision OS icon in here and then Apple Vision OS and then just go ahead and install it. This is going to be installing the Vision OS package behind the scenes. So it looks like everything looks good there. Then go into Apple Vision OS and in here you can select whether you want a virtual reality experience, a mixed reality experience or a window to the experience, which is what we did before. So in the case of the other scene that we built, if we were to do it now, it's not going to work unless you go back here and then set it to window, to basically to the window. For our case, we're gonna be using virtual reality fully immersive, so we're gonna leave it there. We don't need to do world sensing, we don't need meshing, we don't need playing capabilities, but if you do, you, can, you have to populate this with something, right? For now, we can just leave it as empty. We don't need to add that capability. It's gonna give you the warning, just ignore it. Then go into project validation, and this is really cool. This is something that Unity added, you know, in the last few months where everything is now being validated and it tells you here what we need to do. We need to add the error session, the error input manager, the camera depth texture. If you don't do this, sometimes you fix it and it still shows a black screen. If it does that, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. The camera depth texture needs to be set to on. So just make sure that you double check that after we fix all these issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit fix all and it's still gonna give you these warnings so you can just ignore that for now. And then we don't need to fix the camera now because we're gonna be adding the XRI component for the XR interaction toolkit. So let's go into window here and then package manager. And then now that we're here, we are in the unit registry. We're gonna be typing interaction and that's going to basically show you XR interaction toolkit. And you can just go ahead and hit install. All right, so it looks at like this finish, go into samples and we're gonna be using the started assets. Just go ahead and hit import there. I'm also going to be using the hands interaction demo because we're gonna be using some of the hand tracking capabilities to this demo. And then just go ahead and click on import once the started assets is completed. The other setting in here, this is gonna be going back into the Apple Vision OS and make sure that we populate the usage for hand tracking. It was disabled before, but it's enabled now because we added the XR hands package. So now we have it here. We can say that we're gonna, we're using using these for this demo. And you can put something in here for the usage that applies to use. We now can add the XR component that it's going to allow us to, basically the rig, that is going to allow us to see everything and also interact with our controllers. Well, in our controllers are gonna be our hands, so we can select the XR Origin VR. And then once you do that, it's going to basically add this to the view. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna set everything here to zero, zero, just to make sure that we are at zero, zero. And then remember that I told you about the camera depth texture. So go into the main camera and then you can do it on the rendering pipeline. I'm just gonna set it to on in here, just to make sure that everything is correct. And then this is also going to be getting the device position and also device rotation. So as you rotate your head, it's going to be mapping that correctly and that's going to be done automatically for you. So we don't need to do anything there. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do though is I wanna make sure this is set to the main camera. I'm also going to be adding just a simple cube. So go into 3D object and then cube. And then this one, we can set it as zero, zero. And actually it's going to be a one and then five in here on the Z so that we can see it. And then I like to rotate this to be about 45. And then for the texture that I'm gonna be applying, the actual material, I'm gonna go here into my third party and then materials. And then I think I use the one, I think this one looks looks good. Let me do that again, I'll do it here. And then just make sure that, that way we can see something when we deploy this. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is so that I can show you the left and right controller, which is gonna be our hands. I'm gonna go ahead and go into presets here do left controller first and then I'm gonna assign this to the left controller preset. This came from the standard asset so that's why I wanted to use that and then here I'm gonna do the right controller preset. It's gonna be, it's gonna have everything mapped. I'm gonna go through and then we're gonna be removing this after and then creating everything from scratch that way you understand it completely. So what I'm gonna do now though is I'm gonna go into build settings. We're gonna check this and then add this scene and then we can just go ahead and build and deploy. We can replace this.
All right, so the next part that I'm gonna do is we're gonna be creating a couple of different objects and also setting up the scene. So what I'm gonna do here is, let's go ahead and drag and drop our logger. All right, guys, so what I added was the logger, the floor, and also the three different cubes so that we can interact with them as we're using hand tracking. Also, each one of these has a rotator component that comes from that Learn XR core. And then basically, it's just going to rotate it at this specific speed. And then the maximum rotation time that I'm going to use is going to be 0.15. So you can look at that code if you are interested on. But for now, this is going to get us going with this tutorial. So the next thing that I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go into scripts here. And then we're going to be creating a new one where we're going to be basically adding interactions, right? I want to create what, what's called a pointer, and that pointer is going to be a sphere that is going to sit right at the pointer position of each one of my hands. And then as I'm doing a pinch, it's going to basically display a ray. So that's what this one is going to do, and also display and send some other information to the logger. So this one I'm going to call the Spatial Hand Interaction Handler, just to keep things consistent. The hand information that we get from Vision OS. So it's going to be the game object that we're going to be using to track our hands. And then the special pointer is going to be just anything that we want to use in 3D to represent the pointer. Remember, the pointer is going to be when we do a pinch, that's going to have a position and also a rotation and also ray information. So that's going to represent that. Also the pointer distance, in my case, the ray on the line render that I'm going to be using. What layers am I going to be using for physics the ray cast to be able to collide with? And then also to map the hand position, the hand rotation, the spatial pointer information that we're getting from the Vision OS spatial pointer. Also a couple of different private variables, spatial pointer, the line, and also the selected object. So in the awake method, we're just basically creating the special pointer, setting that to basically inactive so that we don't see it until we start tracking it. Also to get the line and then so that we can also cache that information in here. Here we update the hand position, the hand rotation, also the game object that represents the hands, the rotation and also the position. Also, we get the pointer state information from Vision OS by using the new input system. Basically, we're just saying a special pointer property, which we're mapping, which we're going to be mapping in the input actions, which we haven't done. I'll do that next. And then we're getting the value from that and putting that into here. And then on the update pointer, we're going to be passing that and also the special pointer itself. So if you look at the pointer state, though, just FYI, this has a lot of information, whether we are currently moving or beginning of doing that actual action. And also if it's track, what the device position is, the rotation, the origin, and so on. So just know that there's a lot of information that you can get from that. Also, the update pointer is going to track whether the pointer is active by using the begin state and also the move state of the pointer state phase. And also what the position is of that pointer and also what the rotation is. And then here, we're just going to set the game object to active as long as we're tracking. If we're not tracking, then there's no reason to display and then also the position and rotation of that object. So just know the pointer is different to the hands, right? So the hands is going to be basically the pivot point of where the hands is, whatever Vision OS sends us. The pointer is going to be this position right here where I'm doing a pinch. Just keep that in mind as you get into this. And then if we're active based on these two criteria, then we're going to be basically enabling the line render, also setting the position at index one. And then it's going to be the distance. So there's going to be another point that is a zero, zero, zero. And then the rotation of the ray is going to allow us to basically rotate that ray correctly based on the pointer information that we're getting, which is going to come from the start ray rotation. And then we're just doing a ray cast. If we're doing, you know, if we have a hit, we're going to find out what the object is that we're getting a hit on. And then also we're going to be activating the rotation. I'm going to go ahead and create a new, in this case, I'm just going to do a sphere. And then this one is just going to call it the spatial pointer. In our case, I'm not going to use controller, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And then we're going to be creating a new game object is going to be left hand 
And then this one is going to be, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it and I'm gonna do one for the right hand. So this is when I say we're gonna do everything from scratch. I wanna do everything from scratch so that you understand it as good as you can understand it. And then what I'll do on these ones, I'm gonna go ahead and add the hand interaction. What did I call it? I'll just do a special hand interaction handler. There we go. And then for the first property, it's gonna assign it to itself. And then the second one, I'm gonna assign it to itself. And then for the pointer, we can just assign it to the pointer that we just created. And then we'll do the same thing here for the other hand. For the actual layers though, the layers on these ones are basically assigned to default. You can assign it to something else if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave it as default. Just make sure that this is assigned to default. That way we can interact with the colliders and do the physics to raycast correctly with these objects. We should be okay now. Let me just double check everything. Everything looks good and then save as it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my left hand and then just associate all of those, do vision in this case, and then you can just make this smaller. So this one is gonna be my left hand, right? So I wanna do my left hand position is gonna be that. And then vision OS one more time, or just vision, I think I keep doing that. And then this one is gonna be the left hand rotation. And then this one right here, it's going to be, let's do vision. This one is going to be for my, my first spatial pointer property. And that one is going to be the first spatial pointer. So if you go into the XR origin, there's going to be this input action manager. Just go ahead and add a new element and then we can drag and drop our vision OS input actions. That's going to make sure that it is activated and therefore we can get information for our hands and also the spatial pointer. So once you do that, that should allow us to basically interact with the objects. There's one more thing that I also want to do so that we can see our hands. So if I go here into prefabs, I also have this thing called access and it's basically gonna show you a 3D access of our hands as we rotate them. I think it'll make it look really cool. If you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned on the 2D side or VR side of things with these tools, let me know in the comments. Also, if you wanna see more videos, let me know as well. I'm really curious to see how many people are also interested in learning more about Vision OS with Unity. Thank you very much, guys, for your time. Have a good day.